My name is Mark Brantley, and I'm the proud leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement and the exceedingly proud representative of the people of District 9, comprising the parishes of St. John's and St. Paul's. Since 2007, the people of Number 9 have voted for me consistently and have sent me to Bastia. Election after election, they have reposed their trust and confidence in me. Some say, why should we send you to Bastia? I think the answer is simple, that in me you have someone who is committed, someone who is dedicated, and someone who is strong. Someone who will stand up in Bastia for what is best for my constituents and best for the island of Nevis. My name is Eric Evelyn and I am running for the constituency of Nevis 10 and I'm here because I want to be re-elected to continue to serve the people of constituency Nevis 10 and the people of Nevis and by extension the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I believe that I have what it takes to represent and to represent well. I believe that representation requires commitment, dedication, passion and service with compassion. I believe that I bring all of that and more. I believe that I bring the energy that is required to go to Bastyr and to represent and represent well. My name is Alexis Jeffers. And I am the proud representative of Nevis 11, which includes St. Thomas and St. James. I have been the representative of this proud constituency since June of 2020. You have said in the past that you needed quality representation. You needed serious representation and dedicated representation, which was lacking for 20 years prior to 2020. So I'm asking the people of St. James and St. Thomas Parish once again to repose your confidence, your trust in me once again to go back to Bastia and champion your cause there as your representative of Nevis 11. My name is Mark Brantley, Premier of Nevis. We have employed state-of-the-art technology using fiber optic cable across the island of Nevis and using CCTV surveillance. The idea here is a commitment from my government to have a safer and more secure island for our citizens and residents. And so this was a massive investment made by us in running fiber optic cable across the island and putting in cameras and in commissioning just recently this center which acts as a nerve center for the entire system island-wide. We are taking and using technology to take security to the next level here on the island of Nevis and we're very proud about this collaboration that we've done to create for the island a much safer and secure environment.
went and signed the treaty Down there by the library Bowling and the vision is his daddy The man is a scoundrel, he's plain to see And yeah, he's teaming up with the NRP But give all of them this message for me CCM is the one who want to represent me We stick in with we CCM party CCM party To fight for Queen City We stick in with we CCM party CCM party To remove the money To get me SIDF money We stick in with CCM We going to battle with the same tree We stick in with CCM Alexis Civilian and Grantley My name is Mark Brantley, Premier of Nevis. We have employed state-of-the-art technology using fiber optic cable across the island of Nevis and using CCTV surveillance. The idea here is a commitment from my government to have a safer and more secure island 
for our citizens and residents. And so this was a massive investment made by us in running fiber optic cable across the island and putting in cameras and in commissioning just recently this center which acts as a nerve center for the entire system island-wide. We are taking and using technology to take security to the next level here on the island of Nevis and we're very proud about this collaboration that we've done to create for the island a much safer and secure environment. My name is Mark Brantley and I'm the proud leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement and the exceedingly proud representative of the people of District 9 comprising the parishes of St. John's and St. Paul's. Since 2007, the people of Number 9 have voted for me consistently and have sent me to Bastia. Election after election, they have reposed their trust and confidence in me. Some say, why should we send you to Bastia? I think the answer is simple, that in me you have someone who is committed someone who's dedicated and someone who's strong, someone who will stand up in Bastia for what is best for my constituents and best for the island of Nevis. My name is Eric Evelyn and I am running for the constituency of Nevis 10 and I'm here because I want to be re-elected to continue to serve the people of constituency Nevis 10 and the people of Nevis and by extension the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I believe that I have what it takes to represent and to represent well. I believe that representation requires commitment, dedication, passion and service with compassion. I believe that I bring all of that and more. I believe that I bring the energy that is required to go to Bastyr and to represent and represent well. My name is Alexis Jeffers. And I am the proud representative of Nevis 11, which includes St. Thomas and St. James. I have been the representative of this proud constituency since June of 2020. You have said in the past that you needed quality representation. You needed serious representation and dedicated representation, which was lacking for 20 years prior to 2020. So I'm asking the people of St. James and St. Thomas Parish once again to repose your confidence, your trust in me once again to go back to Bastia and champion your cause there as your representative of Nevis 11. Goes up to my head, can't get over you know, cause the wine's so good. If gonna show ya, you know, the other guys they ask if I need help, but I got control ya, you know, cause I'm a rude boy too. And I say no long talking, when we wine, when we wine, when we wine. You 
say when I out, I don't know when to go back to my house. But if the vibe just right, I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna miss nothing out. Yeah. The people fetting, the jeans them flowing, the music it pumping out. We host not see me, we bed not see me, you know see me staying out. Well if you can't be me, then join me. One life to live, only job can stop me. Yeah, we going till I'm on. Gentlemen, good evening. We want to welcome you wherever you are in your homes. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, or if you are following our CCM website, we want to welcome you to our meeting this evening in the great village of Newcastle. Concerned Citizens Movement is happy. To be here with you tonight and the system is sounding good so i know that you are hearing me all over in nisbet settlement and so on ladies and gentlemen of course before we get started we always like to invite the lord's presence you know that the ccm is a godly party and we always ask god's guidance in whatever we do. So before we commence, let us bow our heads wherever we are and reverence ourselves for a word of prayer. Dear God, we lift up our families and friends. We lift up indeed all the people of Nevis before you. Give them peace in their hectic lives and protect them, dear Lord, against all evil wherever they are and wherever they go. Allow each individual, dear Lord, to be a blessing to others. I declare that all confusion, hatred, envy, pride against one another be dispelled in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to our Concerned Citizens Movement meeting as we march toward the federal election here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Just a few more days to go and we are feeling good. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday is nomination day. Tomorrow, we are going to find out exactly who will be putting their names on the ballot. You see, 
anybody can come and talk because talk is free. But when you put your name down on the ballot, that's a whole nother business right there. So tomorrow is nomination day. And the concerned citizens movement, we are going to be motorcading into nomination day. We are asking all our friends and supporters who can to come out tomorrow morning and join us. We will meet at Caribbean Cove for 9.30. That means be there before 9.30. And then we will leave from there and we will motorcade to the three nominating stations. And we will nominate Alexis Jeffers in Nevis 11, Eric Evelyn in Nevis 10, and our leader, Mark Brantley in Nevis 9. And those will be our representatives when the elections are over. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this federal election is a serious election. And we have come to the point where nomination day is here. So all the nonsense has to stop. And serious business starts right now. And there is no other serious choice in this election than the concerned citizens movement you see this is a federal election but these federal issues they affect us locally here in nevis and we must ensure that the persons who we send to bast here to represent us here in nevis that they are representing us and not just their own self-interest. We have to ensure that we send people to Bastia who have the best interests of the people of Nevis at heart. And when you look at the persons who are saying that they are going to be candidates in this election, well, if they nominate tomorrow, then they're actually going to be candidates. But when you look at everybody, Everybody who has come forward, you can only find three representatives capable of representing us here in Nevis. And those are the three representatives being put forward by the Concerned Citizens Movement. And who did I say they were? Mark Brantley in Nevis 9. Eric Evelyn in Nevis 10, and your very own Alexis Jeffers here in Nevis 11. That is the only choice you have in this federal elections. When you look at the CCM, our candidates, the people of Nevis, you know them. They have been here with you for many years. They have always been around, always been involved in whatever is going on in the community. And when you look on the flip side of things, do we have persons who have done the same? Do we have persons who have equally been representing? Ask yourself that question. We are here in Newcastle. And I understand that the person who is supposed to be the candidate for Nevis 11, for the NRP, is from right here in Newcastle. And I want to ask the question, and you, the people of Newcastle and the surrounding areas, should ask yourselves the same question too. Before this person declared that they wanted to be a politician, that they wanted to be the leader of the NRP. Before all of a sudden, they discovered 
politics. Did you ever see that person around? Did you know that person other than seeing them pass on the street? Did you know her name? Did you ever stop and speak to her? Or did she ever stop and speak to you? And I want you all to ask yourself those questions. Because when you, when you decide to put yourself up to represent people, you must have that track record. All of a sudden, they have come to say they want to be in politics. And we have to ask ourselves, who are they coming to serve? Whose agenda? Whose agenda they are looking to serve? Is it the agenda of the people of Nevis to get what is rightfully ours, to attain our fair share of the CBI? Is that what they are coming to represent when they come to you and they talk to you? Is that what they're talking to you about? And ladies and gentlemen, when you ask yourself those questions, sadly the answer that comes back is no. And then you see for yourselves that the NRP and their candidates, they have no intention to represent you. Indeed, one of the, the candidates for the NRP, the one for Nevis 9, would have gone on the radio and would have said that if they get elected, they're not going to take any position in the government. They don't want a portfolio. So what are they running an election for? To do what? When they don't take a portfolio and they're not a member of the government, how can they represent you? Ask yourselves that question. You see, there are some pertinent questions to be asked. And this is what you have to do when they come around to you. You have not heard them utter one word about fear shear. Because the paymasters are in St. Kitts. And if they say fear shear, the paymaster won't be happy about that. And so even now, in their campaign, they are serving the purpose of the paymasters in St. Kitts. So what do you think they're going to do if by some, some miraculous chance they are elected? They're going to do the same thing. They are not going to be representing you. Ladies and gentlemen, my duty is to host for tonight. You know I love the mic, but my duty is to host. And host I will do. And I will get ready to call our first speaker for this evening. And our first speaker is somebody of note and somebody of distinction. Somebody in his time in government has been doing a marvelous job. A wonderful job upgrading all of the infrastructure around Nevis. When you look around Nevis, you see work being done left, right, and center. And this is the man who has been responsible for that work. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome to the microphone the Honorable Spencer Brand. Would you stand up and see your country dying and never lend a helping hand? Would you see your children's future dwindling, creating much disillusion?
evening, good evening, Newcastle. Let me say a very pleasant good evening to all those who are viewing this meeting here tonight in Newcastle. To those who are listening via the various social media platforms, it is indeed a pleasure for us to be here tonight. And I have specifically chosen that song because if you listen to that song very carefully, there are some lines in that song I want the people of Nevis to pay attention to. There is a line inside of that song. We must correct our mistake. There is a line in that song where it said that we must stand up for our country. And I am here to say to the people of Newcastle tonight that you have a golden opportunity to ensure that we receive our fair share. <laughs> this campaign ought not to have been. This election ought not to have been. If only if only the outgoing Prime Minister were to stick to his word. If only the outgoing Prime Minister were to honor his commitment to the people of Nevis and to the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. That is what this election is all about. When people do not honor their commitment, as a matter of fact, when they do not honor the very document that they themselves would have signed, a document called the Charlestown Accord. Now you here in Newcastle, ladies and gentlemen, in 2020, for the very first time, you would have ensured that you send your CCM candidate, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, to Bastia. You would have ensured that for the very first time, that the Concerned Citizens Movement Party would have had all three federal seats here on the island of Nevis. You would have given your CCM party the platform to stand for you, to fight for you, to ensure that the people of Nevis receive their fair share and their substantial benefit. But lo and behold, but lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, our Prime Minister decided not to honor his commitment. So we are at this crossroad once again. We are going through this process once again. We are here to appeal to the people of Newcastle once again to ask you to go to the polls on the 5th of August to do what you did in 2020 to ensure that you send the Honorable Alexis Jeffers back to Bastille. Our message it's very simple. I know the other side is trying to launch a confusing campaign. I think that by the time the election are over, they still wouldn't even get their message correct to the people of Nevis. They are all over the place. They are picking on everything. But I'm here to say to you tonight, I want you, the people of Newcastle, you, the people of Nevis number 11, to stay focused and to understand what this election is all about. This is a critical election for the island of Nevis. It is a critical election for the very soul of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. It is a critical election to ensure that in St. Kitts and Nevis, we can once again say country above self and we can ensure that democracy is alive and well in St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> Newcastle and St. James's, Nevis number 11. You would have entrusted your confidence and your support in the Honorable Alexis Jefferson in 2020. And we are here to say to you once again to give your support to the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. 
I am here to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that your CCM party will still be the government on the island of Nevis after the, fix, after the 5th of August. Now the other side is trying to give an impression that this is a local election. As I said, they can't get their messaging correct. They can't come to the people of Nevis straight and tell the people of Nevis what this election is all about. They cannot dare say to the people of Nevis that it is all about the fair share for the island of Nevis. Because they know if they do that, they would be in trouble. You see, because the Concerned Citizens Movement Party is an independent party, there is no one that is telling us what we must say and how we must say it. We are an independent organization, independent of everyone else. But I'm saying to you, the other side cannot say that. So ladies and gentlemen, you have, we have a youngster who want to come on the stage to help me spread the message. Yes, you see what the, you see what the fight is all about? You see what the fight is all about? The <laughs> Even the six month old understand what this election is all about. Even the six month old is ready to vote for CCM. Even the six month old is supporting CCM in this election. That is how critical this election is. But ladies and gentlemen, I am here to say to you tonight, stay focused. Tomorrow is nomination day. And we are asking all of the Nivijan public who are available to join us tomorrow at Caribbean Cove at 9.30 when we will travel to Gingerland to see the Honorable Eric Evelyn be nominated. Then we will travel to St. James's where we will see the Honorable Alexis Jeffers be nominated and then we will come to Charlestown where we will see the Honorable Mark Bantley nominated as our candidate so we are inviting everyone to join us tomorrow from 9 30 at the Caribbean Cove on our way to Gingerland but ladies and gentlemen as I was saying this is a critical election for the island of Nevis and I want you to think five years down the road. I want you to envision what Nevis can be like five years down the road. I am saying to you that on the island of Nevis, we have a number of projects that we want to have on stream but are unable to do so because of financial resources. You would recall that we completed phase one of the island main road from Cotton Ground to Cliff Dwellers. I am here to say to you that we have all of the design. As a matter of fact, we already have the contract available. The contractor has been standing by for some time. But we have been unable to execute that contract because of the lack of resources. I am here to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that especially you, the residents of Newcastle, that when you go to the polls on the 5th of August, I want you to think about the fact that if you were to return Alexis Jeffers to Bastia, one of the first things that I know he has been pressing me for is to ensure that we get going on that road. And he will ensure that the resources are made available for us to commence that road. I am here to say to you, the people of Nevis number 11, that we already have the design for the road from Cades Bay to Fountain to Camps all the way over to Nisbet. Again, the contractor has been in waiting. But we cannot execute the project because the lack of resources. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about these initiatives right here in Nevis number 11 alone. I want you to understand that once you elect the Honorable Alexis Jeffers and the Concerned Citizens Movement Party's candidates, you will be assured that we will receive our fair share and we will see tangible development here on the island of Nevis. I want you to ask yourselves a few questions. Why should the people of Nevis go to the commercial banks to borrow monies to implement our various projects on the island of Nevis? I want you to ask yourselves that question. I want you to ask the other side. Why is it that they have not been standing up for the people of Nevis when it comes to our fair share? I want you to ask them, why is it that the Nevis Island Administration must, if they want to implement any projects on the island of Nevis, why should they have to go to the commercial bank to borrow monies? When on the island of Sinkits, that is not the case. And it is our passport. It is our citizenship by investment monies. And I want you, the people of Newcastle, to think about these things. You must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that your CCM candidates could have stayed in Bastia. They could have stayed in Bastia and take knockout. They could have stayed in Bastia and said, yes, Bastia. They could have stayed in Bastia and don't fight for the people of Nevis and collect their pay. They could have stayed in Bastia and watch all the development on the island of Sinkets and don't agitate for the people of Nevis. But no, they have decided to stand with the people of Nevis. They have decided to take a position that is in the best interest of the island of Nevis and the people of Nevis. And I'm asking you, ladies and gentlemen, on the 5th of August, I want you to send the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, and the Honorable Mark Bantley back to Bastia in an overwhelming way to stand up for you again. <laughs> you see, there is only one political party on the island of Nevis that is bold enough, that is courageous enough, that understand what it is to represent the people of Nevis, and that is your concerned citizens' movement party. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are here in Newcastle. And our message is very simple. Our message to you is to go out on the 5th of August and lend your support to the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. Our message to you is very simple. That on the 5th of August, we want you to go to the polls and vote overwhelmingly for the Honorable Eric Evelyn. Our message is very simple. That on the 5th of August, we want you to go overwhelmingly to the polls and vote for Mark Bantley. So ladies and gentlemen, while we have been on this campaign trail, I believe that by now, we are very much aware of the various issues that we are facing. But I want you to think about Nevis. I want you to understand that this election is to ensure that Nevis receive its fair share. I want you to understand that this election is all about honest, proper, and decent representation in Bastia. I want you to understand that this election is to ensure that the people of Nevis are placed in a position so we can see tangible development on the island of Nevis. And I submit to you tonight, I submit to you tonight that the only political party who can deliver on these things is the Concerned Citizens Movement Party. We're sticking with we CCM Party, CCM Party, to fight for Queen City. Now, 
ladies and gentlemen, the people of Newcastle would have sent a man to Bastia for some 20 years. And over those 20 years, he has nothing to show the people of Newcastle that he has brought back for the people of Newcastle. I want the people of Newcastle and Nevis number 11 to understand that for 20 long years, you have sent a man to Bastia. And as a matter of fact, he was bold enough to proclaim to the world that the people of Nevis don't want nothing. That was shameful, ladies and gentlemen. And look at the difference. For 20 years, you have sent a man from this constituency to Bastia and have delivered nothing. And your CCM party would have been at the federal level in government for seven years and have delivered over 400 million dollars ladies and gentlemen their argument is their argument is what have we done with 400 million dollars and i often say to people when they ask that question it is obvious that they are either not living in nevis not even sleep for 20 years they've been sleeping it is either that they are not living in Nevis or they are being dishonest. I believe the latter. I believe that they are being dishonest to the people of Nevis. And I want the people of Nevis to understand that when you have dishonest people who are coming to you to tell you that your CCM party have not done anything with $400 million, I want you to say to them, go sit down. <laughs> I think I'm being too nice. You know, the Honorable Eric Evelyn is correct. He is correct. They are telling lies. And I want you that when they come to you with their lies, I want you to say to them, go sit down. You're voting for Alexis. Tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a number of speakers here tonight. And I know that we are trying to splice this campaign with Culturama. And I don't want to wear out my welcome here tonight in Newcastle because we have a number of speakers. I just want to say to the people of Newcastle, you know Alexis Jeffers. He has been with you. Stick with him. Continue to entrust in him your confidence, and especially on the 5th of August, give him your overwhelming support. I want to say to the people of Gingerland, you know Eric. You know who Eric is. And I want you on the 5th of August to give Eric Evelyn your overwhelming support. And ladies and gentlemen, in Nevis number nine, you know the Honorable Mark Brantley. You know the Sheriff. And you know... <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, I can't wait until the 6th of August to come. You know why? I can't wait until the 6th of August to come. Because I've been hearing the Premier say he wants a particular job. He wants a particular job to do a particular investigation. And I believe that by now, everybody knows who the sheriff is. And when, when he does an investigation, you know what the result would be. So ladies and gentlemen of Nevis number 9, on the 5th of August, I want you to give Mark Brantley your overwhelming support. So ladies and gentlemen of Nevis, Ladies and gentlemen of, ne of Newcastle, Nevis number 11, Nevis number 10, and Nevis number 9, there is only one choice in this election, and that is your concerned citizen movement party. Thank you, good night, and God bless.
Thank you very much, Spencer Brian. A very, very fiery presentation. Feeling good here in your castle tonight. You know, a couple of days ago I heard the Honorable Alexis Jefferson say we should keep all the meeting in Nevis 11 because we get a big, big turnout whenever we come to Nevis 11. You know, he was right. So I feel good to see the crowd here tonight. And it's still early. People still coming. You see, elections are on the horizon. Tomorrow is nomination day. After tomorrow, we're going to know if they're serious. If they're serious about being in this race or not. You understand? And when or if they decide to put their names on the ballot, it's going to be licks in nine, licks in ten. And by the look of this crowd tonight, definitely licks in eleven. That's the next sign. Are you the tie and lose? That's the next sign. Are you the tie and lose? Pure licks. CCM gonna be sharing all over. You see, I believe that the electorate in Nevis understand exactly what's going on. People could see what's going on and they know that NRP don't have any intention at all to go to Sinkis to fight for anything for Nevis people. They know that. They know that it's only the concerned citizens movement who has been standing up and who will stand up for us here in Nevis. You know, when they were in government before, they were in coalition with Labour. And the only thing we got from Labour was loan from SIDF. And guess what? People in Nevis never heard a thing about SIDF. It's only when CCM start to talk and say that money coming in over there and we need to get some. It's only so Nevis people start to know that money's coming in. Money's coming in from CBI. And so, we got some money. Yes, we got it in 2015 and we got some money. And we put the money to good use. When you drive up Shaw's Road, all of that is where the money gone. So when they ask about where the money gone, you can see the money when you drive around Nevis. You see, when NRP was in government before, you know what they did? They went to every bank in Nevis and they borrowed at some really, really ridiculous interest rates. All kind of 9% interest rate to borrow 20 and 30 million. That is what they did to try to bankrupt Nevis. You all remember? When the permanent secretary and the party at the time said that after they finished paying salary, that no money was there, that the country was broke. You all remember that, right? That is where they want Nevis to go back to. And we in the CCM say, not a thing or so. You all remember when CCM was in government sometime, I think in 2013, it was when a bank decided they were not going to honor the checks of the Nevis Island administration. Civil servants in Nevis could not get paid on that Wednesday. And the NRP went all to tongue and they laughed. Ha, 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 Rejoicing. And guess what? A lot of the people who did not get paid were NRP supporters. But they did not care because they were saying, oh, how you do it? Makes CCM look bad. You see, they don't care anything about the people of Nevis. All they want is to get their hands on power. And we, the people of Nevis, have to ensure that we don't allow them to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving right along. And we're going to call the next speaker to the microphone. And the next speaker, we know we're going to go out to support him tomorrow for nomination day. We're going to nominate him in Nevis 10 because we know 
that he is going to come back as a winner. And I want to tell him early, when you come on the mic, right? I want to tell you, election day, when you done wrap it up in Gingerland, come over, bring your crew, and come over to 11. And let's make sure we wrap it up over here too. Ladies and gentlemen, give a loud welcome to the representative for Nevis 10, the Honorable Eric Evelyn. My heart's on fire You come to me, come to me Wild and wild You come to me Give me everything I need Give me a lifetime of promises And a world of dreams to all the surrounding areas of Newcastle. It is such a pleasure to be here in CCM country. And you know, as the time, as the clock goes, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Come in August the 5th. Come in August 5th. Come in Friday, August 5th. Let me say good night to all of the wonderful people who are joining us via radio and joining us online as well because we know we have a huge following because people want to be in tune with the issues and people want to be in tune with the concerned citizens movement. And we also want to say good night and a special thank you as well to all of the fine folks across Nevis who have been so welcoming to us as we do our walkthroughs. Very, very welcoming to us because you know what? They love the message that is being taken to the streets by your party, by your big blue machine, by the concerned citizens movement. And of course, we remind you that we are also in the heart of the Culturama season. And I won't be very long tonight because your man from right here in St. James, Alexis Jeffers, he's here. The Honorable Premier still have to come. And of course, you know, I'm the Minister of Culture. So I have to try to touch most, if not all, of the activities as well. And so... I can't wait for next Friday to come when culture I'm going to finish. Right? When culture I'm, I don't start to practice my dance moves, you know. I don't start to practice my dance moves for when we win on the 5th of August. We with, with CCM party. CCM party. I ain't seen nothing yet. You think, they, you think they call me the dancing minister for joke? Nothing tall goes so. Anyway, we are delighted to be in the St. James area because we are here tonight. We are here to support your man, your action man, the man who has been with you over all these years, who has never disappointed you, the Honorable Alexis Jeffords. And the big blue machine is here. Because we have been here throughout Nevis with a very consistent message. 
from the moment we started our campaign, our message has been a consistent one. I am sure there is no party running in this election that has a message as clear and as consistent as the Concerned Citizens <laughs> Movement. Yes, that is, one is, that is one of our consistent messages. We want our fair share. And you know, when Minister Brown was here, he said the other side, they're looking something to say. They don't have an issue up to yet. They're jumping here, there, and everywhere. But every night when we come on the CCM platform, our message is consistent. And you know why the message is consistent as well? Because we are a party that continues to stand for the people of Nevis, that continues to stand for Nevis. And so every night, every night when we come to you with our consistent message, it's all about standing for Nevis, standing for Nevisions and residents, getting our fair share. And I am so happy that our consistent message that we bring night after night is resonating with the people of Nevis. That is why when we do our walkthroughs, the people are so welcoming and so warm to us because they love the message. And you know what? You know what? The three of us who are running for the federal elections, we don't even have to consult before we come to the meetings because we are singing from the same hymn sheet. We are singing from the same page. Our message is clear and our message is the same. So we don't even have to consult. And so because we have been having such a consistent message and because the people of Nevis feel very insulted by what is coming from Bastyr, what has been coming from the seat of the federal government, that is why they are sticking with us. You know, as I walk through, as I go around, and even in my constituency, I was talking to some young people in my constituency over the weekend, and I was pleasantly surprised. I spoke to one young man who is always very reserved. I never heard him speak politics before. But before I can open my mouth, the first thing he comes say, we're going to whip them on Friday next week. We're going to whip them. And you know what he also said? He said, I have never, I have never seen a leader, a premier of Nevis, who has gone to St. Kitts and have stood up so firmly for the people of Nevis. And that is a fact. And that is a fact. And you know the good thing about it? The great thing about it is that our leader, who has been standing so resolute and so firm for Nevis and Nevisions, he has two people, Alexis and Eric, on each side, and we are standing with him. We are standing head and shoulders with Mark A.G. Brantley. Because all of us, all of us are proud Nivisions and we want only the best for Nevis and Nivisions and residents. Unlike the others who are afraid to say what they want for Nevis, have they ever come and tell you what they want for Nevis from the federal setup? They can't tell you because they said they don't want a portfolio. So if you don't want a portfolio, you can't go down to Bastia, go say anything. I mean, one of the most the, um, shameful thing you could hear is a minister without portfolio. And imagine somebody who's running against the sheriff going to say, she no want no portfolio. Could you imagine that? And so Mark has been standing for Nevis. Alexis has been standing with Mark. Yours truly has been standing with Mark. And night after night, we come here to tell you that we are standing with Mark and we are all standing for you. And that is why you have to stick with us because we are sticking with you. Our consistent message night after night is telling you what we have done with the 400 million 
dollars that they're making such a big issue over. And as Bran said, it got to be that they um either asleep, they ain't live here, or they might tell a lie. I ain't going to say dishonest. I'm going to say they might tell a lie. Because if you're going to live in Nevis, walk on the streets of Nevis, drive on the streets of Nevis, and say you ain't see where the money gone, you are being absolutely lie. And that is being absolutely, as Brian said, dishonest, but I'm going to say lie. And so we come to you. We tell you night after night what we have done with the money. We tell you night after night what we will do when we get the rest of our fair share. We tell you all of the plans that we have for the money when we get it. We tell you that we would not go back to Bastyr again unless we have it clear in our minds what we are going for. And we are going for to, is to fight for Nevis and Nevisions. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the people of St. James, the people of Nevis 11, you sent a very strong message in 2020 when you elected the Concerned Citizens Movement candidate in the person of Alexis Jeffers for the very first time in the history of federal elections. You made a statement. You created history. And we are here tonight to tell you that you must continue on that path. We are here to tell you tonight that Alexis Jeffers has represented and represented exceptionally well in Bastyr. You know, Alexis represents well at the NIA level. You see all of the work that has been done in St. James since he has been your representative. And you see the work that he continues to do when he became the federal representative. And the work has to continue. Of course, you see it every time you walk and drive the streets of St. James. You see the excellent work that your representatives your representative has done. You see the Newcastle police station over there, call it what? They call it a hotel. You see the water taxi facility that they have so much to talk about. You, they have so much to talk about. But trust me, you all heard the numbers that the Honorable Mark Brantley said, the numbers of persons who used that facility during the, um, the music festival. And the numbers will continue because a lot of people are coming in for Culturama as well. And so Alexis has been working and working well on your behalf. And that is why, as Troy said, when we come to St. James or to Nevis 11 to keep a meeting, that is why the St. James and the Nevis 11 people, they are standing with Alexis and they are saying he is our man and he is going back to past here without a doubt. We're sitting with we to fight for Queen City. That is why the numbers keep turning out for Nevis 11. And you know, even before Alexis went to Bastyr in the federal government, I know that this area, Newcastle, you have never let down Alexis Jeffers. And we know you're not going to let him down next week, Friday, either. You're not going to do that because you know what the man is capable of. You know the representation he has brought to this parish. He always fights for the people of St. James. He always fights for St. James. And he's always fighting for Nevis at the federal, le federal level. He has gone to Bass here and revolutionized agriculture down there. And of course, as the song said when I came up, simply the best. He has proven himself as the best minister of agriculture in recent history in Bastille. Mark has proven himself long, 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 long time that he is the best by test foreign minister the Federation has ever seen.
And in less than two years, I am proud to say that I have proven myself as the best Minister of Environment that Bastia has ever seen. Look how easy we go have a day. Everything we do, it's a bad day. And so because we are the best team, because we are the dream team, that is why you must continue to rally with us and to rally specifically with Alexis Jeffers here in CCM country. Every time an election is called and we get over to Newcastle, Alexis always wins handsomely. And I'm expecting come the 5th of August that it will be no different. And so I'm asking the good people of Newcastle and all the surrounding areas, all the surrounding areas, all the good folks in St. James, we are asking you to continue to rally with your man, the man of the people, the hardest working minister, Alexis <laughs> Jeffers. <laughs> And he will continue the excellent work that he did. He started in Bastyr. In less than two years, myself and Alexis made a serious, serious mark in the federal government. You know, well, we know Mark is a veteran. He has been there long before us. But when we joined him in Bastyr in 2020, now we are in July 2022. We have done some serious work in the federal government and that work because it was so good you have to tell us we will continue but we can't continue unless you go out and vote overwhelmingly on the 5th of august <laughs> and so i want the good people of nevis 11 to bear this in mind because I've said it on a couple occasions that for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we know that Alexis' seat is safe and sound in 11. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, the people on the other side, they are in Alexis' seat. They are it. I don't know whether they got on shades or whether they got on glasses. But they might watch the seat chat. Bat, 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 bat. But I want the people of Newcastle to say, nothing tall go so. Look how easy we go have a day. Everything we do is a bad day. I want the people of Nevis 11 to tell them, nothing tall go so. This is Alexis country. Alexis a run things in Nevis 11. Well, I don't even have to talk about me, right? Because we know how the people in Gingerland roll. We know how we roll in Nevis 10. And we're going to roll like that come the 5th of August. You know, when I was doing some campaigning today, one of my good constituents told me, Eric, I'm glad you ain't put up no poster. Don't waste no time put up no poster because everybody in Gingerland know you. So don't put up no poster. And I keep telling, I keep telling them, well, I don't need to, everybody knows me. But you know what? The person who is running against me on the other side, the night when the bell rang, Lord have mercy, they went up and down Gingerland putting up poster left, right, and center. But you know what? Even Mother Nature about CCM. Because in two days, the wind hauled on every one of them. Look how easy we go have a day. Everything we do is a bad day. And you know the good thing about it is? You know the good thing about it is? Thank God they can't say that CCM people take down one. Because they used ladder and they were high up on the poles. But you know what the wind say? Not, not, not a ginger land. Not a ginger land. Go back a band's gut. So I believe some of them poster what the wind take up reach right back a band's gut. I believe some of them poster reach right back in band's gut. 
And so we are absolutely clear what we are doing in Nebus 10. Because we, they have gotten quality representation from myself. The good people of Nevis 9 are sticking with the sheriff. There's no doubt about that. They are sticking with the sheriff. And over here in Nevis 11, please, this is a crucial and important election. And I know a lot of the times people don't have the energy and the urge for federal elections. But this one is crucial. This one could determine the future of Nevis. This one could determine the future of divisions and residents. And it is important that you go out in your numbers and vote for Alexis Jeffers and the CCM come the 5th of August. We have told you night after night what we will do. Alexis has been telling you night after night what we will do. I know he has been stressing a lot on housing and agriculture and there's so much more that can be done when we get our resources from Bastia that they have been withholding for us for many years. But it can't continue, it got to stop. We want, we fear sheer. And so because we have been outlining night after night what we will do and what we can do with those additional resources that is why it is so important for the people of not only nevis 11 but for the people of nevis to make sure that come the 5th of august you get to the polls and you vote for the concerned citizens movement better days are coming coming change your way. Better days must come with the CCM. Because when, when we win, when we win on the 5th of August and we march down to Bastia, better days will be coming. Make no bones about that. Better days will be coming. Better and days are coming, coming, change your way. Better days definitely coming. Because you know what? You know what? The good people of Nevis, the people who are not asleep, the people of Nevis who have their eyes wide open, have seen what the CCM is capable of. They have seen what a CCM administration is capable of. And you know, if we have done so much with so little resources, could you imagine what we can do when we get what is truly Ours. And so we are asking the good people of Nevis 11 to stick with Alexis Jeffers. Alexis has not been asleep for 20 years. He has been in between you, right across the whole of St. James, right across Nevis, working hard, went to Bastia, working hard, and he wants to continue that job that you gave him to do in June of 20. 20. If he did so much in less than two years, could you imagine what he can do in another five year term? So I'm asking the good people of Nevis 11, continue to repose your trust and your confidence in your man, in Alexis Jeffers. Continue to repose your confidence and trust in the concerned citizens movement this party the mantra is people matter most and everything we do in the ccm the people are the center of it people matter most and so our programs are always centered on our people and that is why our people continue to move our continue our people continue to live improved standard of living. And we are proud of that. Your CCM government has done that. And we will continue. People of Nevis 11, tomorrow, tomorrow will be nomination day. And I am very anxious because as we are nominated 
tomorrow. It means one step closer to the election. And it is one step closer to victory. You heard me right. One step closer to, to the election. And one step closer to victory. And one step closer to marching back into government headquarters <laughs> on Church Street in Bastia. And so, we are confident, we are confident that all three Hebrew boys, the three men with an impeccable record, the three of us, the dream team, the A team, the three of us who A had no scandal close to are following our names, and that will always continue. The three of us who you can trust, the three of us who are a part of CCM, the party that you can trust. The three of us will be marching back to Bastia with the interest of Nevis, with your interest in our hands as we go back to represent you and to represent you well. And so, people of St. James, make no doubt about it. Make no bones about it on election day. You're voting for the hammer. It is hammer time. And vote for the hammer. Vote for Alexis Jeffers in Nevis 11. In Nevis 10, vote for Eric Evelyn. Vote for the hammer. In Nevis 9, vote for Mark Brandley. Vote for the hammer. And then, on the night of the 5th, and on the morning of the 6th, we're going to tell the other side, are you not tired, Louis? Are you not tired, Louis? Are you not tired, Louis? That's the next side. Are you not tired, Louis? I love that, DJ. I love that. Are you not tired, Louis? Because trust me, come the 5th of August. It's all three. Eric, Mark, and Alexis. Good night. Thank you. God bless. Go out in your overwhelming numbers. Send us back to Bastia to continue our work. God bless you. Have a good night and happy Culturama. We speak in with we CCM party. CCM party to fight for Queen City. We speak in with we CCM party. Yes, up here, warm, eh? this mic, warm. Eric, you put some heat in this mic, eh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving right along. We're not going to lose any steam at all. Eric, we want to thank you for that punchy and warm presentation. The mic is so warm, but we want to heat it up. We want to put it on fire tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no time wasting. We want to call to the podium the man who is the representative for Nevis 11. The man who is going to carry the hopes of all the people of Newcastle. From Butler's all the way back to Craddock Road. We want it to be CCM country. We want it to be Alexis Jeffers country. Please make some noise and help me. Welcome the Honorable Alexis Jeffers to the microphone. The Prince of Darkness walks behind me. But he will never, 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 never control me. Today I live a life of sorrow. Working for the joys of a bright tomorrow Carrying my cross Carrying my cross <laughs> Good night to the people of Newcastle <laughs> CCM people, good night I believe we are going all the way down to the airport and beyond And all the way up to camps and I believe we have been heard in Mount Lily and Fountain too, you know I believe so 
Let's get this right. Well, it's good to be in your castle. Our castle, as we just say. Feels good to be here too. And you know, someone said before that every meeting we have held in St. James, in St. Thomas's, Davis 11, we have had the best crowds. Well, that is testimony to the support that this constituency has always given to the CCM party. So I want to say to welcome to CCM country. That's the next sign. Are you the giant loose? That's the next sign. Are you the giant loose? From the inception of the CCM party, the people of St. James have continued to rally with this great party. And we want to thank you for that. But you know why you rally with us? It's the best party in the island. The best party in the Federation as well. And so, and so, every area that we visit in St. James, the people have come out. And also in St. Thomas Parish. Well, I want to start by saying thank you to all of the speakers who came before me, who gave such great endorsement of my candidacy. I want to thank you, and the people of Nevis 11 will also give great endorsement come August 5th of this year. That's next Friday. We're going to have an overwhelming victory in Nevis 11. You know, back in 2020, the people of Nevis 11 came out in their resounding numbers. And you know what? Got the NRP going and reeling and ain't catch themselves yet. It's a seed they've had for the last 40 years. Almost 40 years, I would say. And we came in 2020 and we said enough was enough. Because there was no representation coming from the NRP. And so the people of Nevis 11 said enough was enough. And in a short two years since I've been a representative at the federal level, I have given great account of myself there. I'm not going to go into that just yet because Eric would have touched on it. But we'll go into other things in the meantime. Because we are here tonight because of a federal election, yes? And I'm here to say to you tonight that because... We are here. It means that the CCM has been prepared for a long time now. Long time we've been, we've been prepared. And since the announcement of the date, we have rolled out our campaign. We have gone to the length and breadth of Nevis. As a matter of fact, this afternoon we were in Craddock Road until after seven. And you know why we are doing this? We are doing it because we want the people of Nevis to understand that in this party, we represent seriousness. When we say we are representing you, we are serious about our representation. And that is why we are bringing the message to you to every corner of Nevis. Whether it's in the east, whether it's in the west, in the north and in the south, we are bringing our message to you. And we are bringing our message with our leader, the Honorable Mark Brantley spearheading the team. That is bringing that message. As a matter of fact, as I touch on that, let me say this. The NRP can be a serious party, you know, I'll tell you why. Since 2019, the NRP has had four different leaders. Four different leaders. What that tells me is that they're not ready for prime time. They keep changing leader, and now they end up with something that you don't know if you could call she a leader. Because she has never led anything in this country before. Nothing. But I won't touch that right now. I'm going to leave that until later. Let me get to something else in the meantime. Because I have done an excellent job at the local level. And I've proven that I can transcend to the federal level and bring great representation there as well. So while we're in the constituency of St. James, let us look at what has happened in this great constituency. You know, back in 2008, Nurse Jean would have handed over the baton. The great Nurse Jean. She said she was done with politics then. And we said, in the CCM, we have to find a suitable replacement. And I can recall in 2008, when the question was asked, well, Zook, you ready? I said, I am ready like Freddy. Ready and eager to go. 
But I said to my party then, and this is where honesty and decency comes into play. I said to my party then, I had a U.S. passport in my possession. No one knew that then. But I said I had that. But before the date of election is announced, I will go and renounce my citizenship. Because I didn't want that to be something that the party has to deal with. And they didn't have to deal with it. So I journeyed and I got rid of the passport. But Chet, you understand what I'm saying. You have to come clean to your party. You have to come clean to the people that you want to represent. You have to ensure that all times your hands are clean and you are transparent about what you do. And that is what I represented then and I represent that up until today. Because every time I open my mouth, I can speak with authority because when I speak, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. And so that was done. I go in this road, you know, because you got to examine people. And I'm going to get to it too. But like I said, while we are in, here in St. James, some have gotten up overnight out of a slumber. After 20 years in this constituency, they have said that there is nothing going on here. What chopping is them a talk? A foolishness them a talk. They stand up on the Wally Water taxi pier and they say, you ain't finished yet. You could imagine that. They walk on it every day, every week, every month, and they say, you ain't finished yet. That is the same lady who get about of a slumber the other day. You don't expect anything else anyway. But I'll tell you, it was not easy to land that project there. It was not easy, but it was necessary. And that is why when we sat down at the cabinet, we said that we must have a welcoming, a welcoming water taxi facility for visitors and our citizens when they return to the island. And also to provide that connection with Nevis and St. Kitts. St. Kitts and Nevis. So we build that facility. We got $6 million from the SIDF. Just the land alone, the property we bought, cost $1,260,000. Translate into easy. Just calculate. You got your phone. It's about 4.3 million East dollars that came out of the $6 million. So you see, while they were sleeping, we were working. And if they knew that we were building that facility, then of course they wouldn't be questioning, well, where the $6 million gone? 4.3 already gone into the property. The pier itself cost 595,000 US dollars. That's about 1.6 million EC dollars. Add that to the 4.3, see where you reach. See where you get to, you have to fence it, you have to build bathroom, you have to clean up the property, you have to get it ready. My last calculation said we spent just about $5.6 million thus far. The building is still there to be renovated. We said we were going to do the first phase that is completed, doing what it has to do and it is doing what it should do. And as a matter of fact, over 8,000 people would have used that facility over the Music Fest weekend. <laughs> That is progress when you talk about development and progress. That is what that water taxi facility represents. And I know there's this discussion about parking. We have already negotiated with the Yarwood family to buy just about nine acres of land just on the opposite side. Just where you see those boats are, that boat yard. It's going to cost 1.9 million EC dollars. I want to thank them because in Jones Estate you get land for that, type, oh, that kind of money. You must say you get a good deal. Thank you, Yawood. You have had enough out of the island. Give us back something. Thank you. And I don't think you'll feel bad about that. I tell him straight to your face, listen, you have had enough. Give us something back. And he acceded, and I want to thank them. So very shortly, you'll see additional lands made available to us for parking. This is a government that continues to work and think about the future of the island of Nevis. So when they come with a nothingness, haven't contributed nothing to neighbors. Nothing. But we know why they were not contributing anything. We'll get to that too. But you leave down there and come up. Charles Road, I'm not even going to spend time on that. Beautiful road. As a matter of fact, when we had the town hall meeting to launch the project in Butler's, the road project that is, the lady came, the same lady who was sleeping for 20 years, and when I congratulated the young men who would have spearheaded the construction of this road, that is the surveyor, 
the engineer and the person who spearheaded the construction of this road. She said she didn't know who they were. She said they didn't know who they were. So I said, see them there in the front, one, two, three. So I want to thank them because all this was pure local engineering, local construction. All of the men and women who contributed to this, all of them are locals. Whether from Newcastle, Brooklyn, St. James, or across the island of Nevis. Look at it, beautiful road. Beautiful road. And you all remember what was here before? <laughs> a old concrete road that was there for over 50 years. So we would have done some work here. I said also to the policemen who are housed there at the old police station, listen, while I'm the representative of St. James, I'll bring you a brand new police station there. Policemen must be able to sleep well, rest well, so that they can provide the safety and security that we want to protect this community. So, you know, it wasn't easy, you know. It wasn't easy. That wasn't supposed to be me, Alexis Jeffers or the NIA. It is a federal responsibility. But we didn't sit down and wait for any federal government to do anything, you know. We couldn't wait. Because what was there represented something completely opposite to what the people of Newcastle and St. James needed. And by extension, the island of Nevis. I wouldn't sleep there. I'm sure many of you who would have seen what was there would never sleep in that police station that was there before. So we said we'll break it down. And I can recall we met with the Commissioner of Police, that is the Honorable Van Semri and I, and Stedman Trust. We sat with the police, the High Command that is. And Van Semri told me, God bless his soul, Jeffers, I leave it up to you. You could imagine hearing that. I didn't have no money. No budget was there for it. And whoever want to take that wrong list, that, that's their business. No budget was there for it. But I meant that at that point, it had to be done. And by God's grace and by God's will, it's, it's done. It's done. We went about that. We never, we never wavered. As a matter of fact, we started it. And I'm going to say it again. We started it with $50,000. We started it with $50,000 in December of 2017. It's a project that would have cost us just over $5 million. Look it up there. Brand new police station. And you know, they find all kind of fault with it. And one fault they can't find with it is that it's a police station housing the police. Ben, them. But think about what was there before. Some would have passed there and say, I want to see how I and get on bill back. A senior police officer, you know. A senior police officer who, I believe, should have been standing up as a resident of this constituency. I want a police station rebuilt in St. James, in Newcastle. Stand up with the NIA. Came there and said, I want to see how I get on bill back. But I watch him as he walk out and say, I'm going gonna, gonna to show you how. I'm going to show you how because as you have heard from the Premier, he always said, anything that needs to be done, Anywhere in the island of Nevis, give it to me. Give it to me. I don't think there's any task out there that I cannot handle. Once the money is there, that is. And even if the money is not there, I'm going to try to find it. Because there's always what you call repurposing of funds. And you all who are in accounting would know what repurposing means. If something is allocated for a project A and that is not going to finish on time or you want to move on to something else, you can do that. You are government. If you want to accomplish three things out of one particular amount of money that was allocated for any project, you can get it done. Because it's the same thing we have done all up and down Neve. It's not a thing wrong with it. But once we provide the amenities for the people of this island to enjoy, that is what a government should do. And that is what we continue to do. So I'm going to move from the police station and go up to VOJN. I hear the NRP, a felony and daily. I don't even want to give him credit and give him no, no, no time on Von Radio. But anyway, the, the, the fellow named Daly, I hear him say one night that NRP was the one who did that stadium. The same stadium up that VOGN. When the NRP left government, not the NRP, the CCM left government in 2006. And I believe Tad is here somewhere. Tad, remember, when the CCM left government in 2006, that stadium or that building was left there unfinished. 
The NRP spent six and a half years in government and never you move, not even a stone up there, not even a blocks, nothing. Those of you who are, have been around here long enough would remember what was left there. Not one thing was done to that facility. Oh, well, <laughs> you hear him. Well, I'm glad the people of St. James hear all of that because, you know, and that is why we continue to reject NRP. Reject them. But anyway, not one thing was done to that facility. Well, I came in and I said, listen, as soon as we get our hands on some money, we don't get it finished, you know. Well, look at what it is up there. We finished it and not only that, we said, we're going to put in these floodlights so the guys can be there late at night playing football, playing cricket, doing track, whatever they want to do, socializing and look at what is happening now. A beautiful, beautiful facility. As a matter of fact, it is one of the best facilities outside I was going to say golf park, you know. But golf park, I'm going to get to it like, like it one day. <laughs> We're going to get to golf park one day and get it like it. But it's one of the best facilities in Nevis. One of the best. And as a matter of fact, every weekend, teams journey here. I mean, teams have come from St. Kitts. As a matter of fact, I'll say to you that the Leeward Islands, uh, what, what are they called again? The Patriots? The Patriots, yeah, they're the um, CPL team. They have come there to practice as well. I mean, people from Atlanta Antigua, oh my goodness. And when you hear people talk about that facility, but the good thing is that they talk about it, and where is it? In St. James. In St. James. So I want to thank my colleagues for giving me the support. Because even before the facility, the stadium was done, we lighted that facility because we said, while we are constructing, the guys can do their recreation. And that was... The thinking behind all that. I'm going to leave that and move on a little bit, you know, because I'm going to go up the road from there. One of the pledges we made in our manifesto in 2013, going into 2017, was that all who would have gone to university and studied and come back after being here for five years or more, will sell them land at one dollar per square foot and build a house on that, that, uh, that piece of land so that they can have a home and build a family right here in the island of Nevis. And I hope, I hope my colleagues ain't feel bad because they say, it got to happen in St. James too. Well, as the Minister of Housing, what do you think I should do? Bring it to St. James. Bring it to St. James. So up in Ghana's, we subdivided some land there, 8,000 square feet of land at $1 per square foot, and we built a house valued at $350,000. And we'll go up there to university, oh my goodness, wonderful houses. And you know, I am so pleased with the thinking of this party in government, because we said we want to be able to keep our young men and young women here. There's what you call brain drain. And when they get frustrated in your country or in the island, they think about going abroad. So we wanted to keep them here. And over 12, I believe it's about 12 persons thus far who would have benefited from that particular initiative. And we have University 1, we're going to have University 2 as well. Because I want to say to the people of Newcastle, land is coming again because we are buying 36 acres of land right across from University Heights. <laughs> Those are lands that were once owned and in the possession of foreign entities. And when the opportunity came to buy those lands, I went to the cabinet and said, listen, 36 acres of land, prime land that is, we must be able to put our hands on that. We must be able to purchase it so that the people of Nevis, not only St. James, but the entire island of Nevis, whoever want to come, as they say, whosoever will may come. Once you're a citizen, you'll earn a piece of that land up there. 36 acres of land. And like I said, we'll carve out another university high too. Because we have people returning from university all the time. And over the next couple of years, you want to, able to, you want to be able to fulfill that need to our young men and young women. But since I'm talking about land, let's go down to Herbert Beach now. Let's go down to Herbert Beach. Because that land, uh, those lands have been in the hands of foreign entities for many, many years. I believe since 1980. Or even before. Well, I want to say to you, that those lands are now probably owned by the people of Nevis. 
You all ain't seem like I ain't proud of that, you know. But I'm going to give you all some history behind it, you know. When I saw a memorandum of transfer that Anbas was going to buy those lands, I said, not in the Navis, no more. You don't want enough. I said she would have owned enough. And we went, I went to cabinet, carried my submission, I said, we want to acquire those lands. So when you go down there, Monday, August 1st, to jump up and enjoy all the music, jump up and stamp up on it because it's your land. It's your land. So 13.9 acres of, of land at Herbert Beach belong to the people of Nevis. We stick in with we CCM party, CCM party, to fight for Green City. And you know, that is why you elect people, you know, you elect people to work for you, to represent you, and try their best and do their best for and on behalf of you. We don't come, we don't know any gimmickry. When we come, we come serious. That is why CCM is a serious, serious party. On election day, we're gonna have a demo. It's only one choice, we go to CCM. But not only that, let's move on, you know, because roads have been done all up and down Nevis. All up and down St. James. But let's go up to Madden, see the view. Oh my goodness, one of the best housing development in Nevis. I don't care who else beg about them one. Listen, phase one and phase two up at Madden's, the best thing you'll ever see. You drive into it, you think you're in some development in Miami, Florida, somewhere in California, somewhere else. But what I want to say to the people of Nevis, when this party does anything, it's done with quality. There's a taste to it. And you go up there and see that housing development. Young men and young women own their homes now. And you know, we did it in such a way the mortgage that we would have put in place made it easy for them to get into those houses and to pay for them. None of them are paying in excess of $1,200 a month, you know. You have people up there paying less than $1,000 too. And that was the thinking that we would want to put in place a program where it would make it easy for young men and young women to own a home right here on the island of Nevis. It is so difficult to access mortgages through the commercial banks. And because we knew that, we had to fashion something to accommodate our young people. So I have to applaud the CCM for that. I don't want to knock Cherry Garden, but Cherry Garden was a development done under in RP. It was done how it was done. But that is not our style. Maddens, even up at Nisbet Settlement, you go up to Cotton Ground, Cahoon. You go over to Craddock Road, you go up to Hamilton, you go to Chimney View, uh, Chimney Crescent, you go all over Nevis. Since we've been in government, you see the representation of CCM and the quality housing that we have brought to the people of Nevis. But I'm not going to stop there now because there are a couple of things that I want done in St. James and in Nevis 11 as well. You know, the people of St. Thomas should not feel anywhere tonight, you know, because when I come to St. James, I like to focus on St. James to some extent. This is a federal elections, yes. But we also have to talk about local issues because what we accomplish at the federal level translates into what we'll do locally. We talk about fair share. When we get with fair share, it's local things we're going to be doing, you know. Housing, roads, the expansion of the uh, Van Sammer International Airport, the expansion of the deep water harbor over there at Long Point, the construction of a new sixth form facility, expansion of all of our schools and renovations of our schools as well. There's a lot of things we have to do. So when we talk about local issues, we have to focus on them because we are trying to get our fair share to ensure that we bring and deliver to the people of Nevis what we are committed to bring. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to the people of St. James, for far too long we have seen our school children going all over the island, whether from young or primary school age. As a matter of fact, I've said that we have to build a proper daycare and preschool right here in St. James. Because that is where you'll feed into the primary schools here, the OJ and St. James Primary. They're both struggling. Because when you take your child and you take them down to Inez, France, or you take them to Charleston, chances are when the time comes for them to go to primary school, they'll go to those schools on that end as well. Because they're accustomed to going there. We want to make sure that right here in St. James, we can keep our young children here so that they can feed into these schools. 
and help to build. I want the day to come when VOJN, have in ex VOJN has in excess of 100 students. I want the day to come when St. James have almost 100 as well. You know what? That would make them more competitive when they get into these sporting activities like the mini Olympics. The larger the schools are, the more competitive they become, whether academically or athletic, in athletics or otherwise. You need the numbers. And that's why my goal in the next three to five years is to ensure we continue to grow these schools. And that's why we build a preschool and, and a daycare center, all in one, right in camps area. And that is a commitment being made. But ladies and gentlemen, I could continue on and on because if I go up to Butler's, you have roads up there, but time is limited. Let's move on to something else. I was saying to you earlier that I am contesting these elections. And I'm confident that we will win Nevis 11. As a matter of fact, I'll say to you that when we come out of Craddock Road, it's hammer time over there. When we come out of Jessup, it's more hammer time. When we go into Cotton Rung, it's even more hammer time. As a matter of fact, last time when we came out of St. Thomas's, we were 80 votes behind. I am certain and assured this time around, when we come out of St. Thomas's, Lord, we're going to be in front. And you know why we're going to be in front? Because the CCM is running against CCM. You all laugh, you know, the CCM, CCM is running against the CCM. Because as I said before, I don't even know who running for the NRP. It must be a ghost because if somebody wake up or they sleep, I don't know and they say nothing going on, nothing doing, it mean that they're sleeping still. But let's speak about what is happening before us here. We have been asking the question over and over again of Janice, the woman who is running for the NRP. We could call Janice the amount of Janice did one of the foolish, the most foolish things ever as a, can, a candidate or as a politician. Stand up all there in her own words. Not a soul making up a thing on Janice. In her own words, she stood up out there and said multiple people who work with her in an office there in St. Thomas was sent to jail, were convicted. They were convicted. So we are asking Janice tonight, and we're going to ask her again. Instead of going up and down and showing us some rusty galvanized down there at Long Hall, going over to the track that is locked down because no car drag racing is over there at the time, taking pictures of sheep, the woman is majoring in minor things. Majoring in minor things. What we are saying to Janice tonight, Janice, the people of Newcastle, the people of St. James, the people of Nevis want you to come clean and say to us, come clean and tell us what transpired in St. Thomas. <laughs> you know, and then happy person met me and said, well, why don't you tell us what happened there? Where we at? If Janice comes out to run, Janice is asked question, want to represent us as people who she's seeking to get a vote from, we need to ask questions. And if she don't answer any questions, then we don't need to vote for her. So the question once again, Janice, with all that has been said out of your mouth, what we have discovered and what we have unearthed, we're asking you to come clean to the people of St. James, before election day. If you don't want to come clean, we'll clean you up. If you don't want to come clean, we'll clean you up. Because we are not. We are not in any con job here in St. James. You know, you're not going to con the people of St. James. You're going to come clean to the people of St. James. If something happens, we want you to put it on the table and let us decide whether you're worthy enough to represent anybody here. And that is a simple message to Janice. And I call her name because she was the one who stood up right across there in front of Sausage. You all know my partner, Sausage. Right across there, he stood up. And you know, some people say things because they think, let me get it out. Let me get it out and make them, let them go with that. But they didn't know. They want to use reverse psychology and you all know, but not us. Not us. Because the truth always come to the fore. And the truth is there. Janice is walking around with the truth and he must come clean and put the truth out to the people.
Maybe that's why you all can't see you see these days, you know, running and hiding. But you could run, but you ain't gonna hide Janice because the truth is there and you better come forward with it. Anyway, let me leave that. Ladies and gentlemen, examine our team. Examine our team. Examine Mark Brantley, Alexis Jeffers, and Eric Evelyn. Compare us to what the NRP is offering. In Mark Brantley, you have one of the best leaders this party has seen thus far. And that is my opinion. And I say that because Mark Brantley has always stood up on matters where many people, many people would fail to touch. Mark Brantley is willing to take on those issues and fight them head on. And that is what a leader should do. That is what a leader should do. When we had these issues with persons who were removed from the list, Mark Brantley said, no way. I'm going to stand up for those, those who cannot fight at that point in time. He will be the champion of their cause. He did so, went to court, and won that, 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 that case. And that is why over 200 plus people who were removed from the list can vote today. So you have to give him credit. And many would have gone to St. Kitts and have failed to stand up against the leadership there. Stand up against what is wrong and what is not right for the people of Davis. Mark Brantley have done that and he's doing that without even, even a bother. Because he knows that he's standing up for what is right and what is decent and what is there for the people of Navis. He's willing to do so. And by doing that, he has my support. He has Eric's support. And any day, Mark say, we are standing up for any issue or any matter. I tell him already, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. I did make a statement. But you know what? I'm not going there with him tonight. But I'm going to tell you, the only time I won't follow Mark Brantley is when we rise on, on, on that day, that glorious day, and we're heading to heaven together. We're going to walk side by side. <laughs> on that glorious day, we'll walk side by side. Walk up those, towards those pearly gates. So I want to be positive and let's never leave the negative. <laughs> but it took me to task for that. But that's all right. But ladies and gentlemen, this CCM party has shown you that is willing to stand up. The NRP has shown you that they failed to stand up on every account when it comes to the island of Nevis. Let's go back to 1998. They stand up in parliament and say, yeah, I support the bill. Class 113. But when the time came to fight and to stand up with the CCM, the NRP fell right down flat. They went out and campaigned against the CCM, the CCM with the secession clause. Campaign against it. You could imagine where Nevis would have been today if we were in an independent country or independent island. You could imagine. I am telling you, I believe we would have been far better off. All the passport money would have collected down there, we would have been collecting our own passport money. We would have been selling our own passport. He would have said, Nevis. And they have their syndicates. But that is where NRP fell down. Have never stood up for Nevis. Well, if I were to think, talk about 2010. 2010, when the VAT was introduced, 17% VAT that is. You know, NRP take a ball with VAT money, send them a syndicate. Take a ball with VAT money, send it to syndicates. And the Prime Minister of the day was so happy that he was able to hoodwink Joseph Perry into sending down the money. At that time, if you all were following the CBI program, is the most money was being raked in then. Because you know what? They took out the field. You know that field where you put where someone was born? Were born? They take it out. Because Iranians, Iraqis, those citizens from those countries, they were able to buy our passport and they were buying them up like bread and butter. Millions of dollars was being made. But instead of Nevis, under the NRP then, crying out, Standing up and fighting for a fair share, they send our money and sink it. And then they get back some money, say that they're getting 24%. Foolishness. How could you take your, 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 your money, send sink? I don't, I don't want to get into the constitutionality of anything. All I'm saying that the CBI money is money that should be flowing into Nevis. 24% of it should be coming here. No, that money should be going over there. So we stopped that in 2013, you know. And we started way back then saying, we need our fair share. Up to today, we are just receiving 7% of 100%. Think it is only 93%. And we are getting 7%. That can't be right. Well, how do NRP could stand up and sit down and say, that is right. I said from the start of this campaign, 
any party that is not standing up for Nevis in terms of, of advocating for a fair share, they should not be voted for in this election. They should be shunned. So I feel comfortable that the CCM has been the party that is championing that particular cause. And that is why the CCM should be the only party on the ballot this election. As a matter of fact, the NRP should have said, you know what? I ain't gonna contest this election. Because I believe in what you're talking about. I believe in fair share. I believe in Nevis. I believe in what is best for Nevis. And the best thing for Nevis is to stand up to Bastier and say, we demand our fair share. Give it to us. We need with 24%. Just imagine what 24% can do for this island. Just imagine. So when you go to St. Kitts and you see nice roads, you see deep water facility, you see all kind of things, expansion of, of our RLB, you see all kind of things being done in St. Kitts. As a matter of fact, the PAP, the peace, all of those are being paid out of, of CBI money. You see all that, and you're here in Nevis, you're in the vulnerable category, want to be on the PAP program, can't get on, and you're blaming the CCM, when in truth and in fact, we should be standing up as one people and saying, give us our program over here, let us run our own program with the money that we should be getting. But that's the thing. <laughs> but what happened to these people? Really, honestly, what happened to NRP? I mean, this is so clear and so open to the whole nation that Nevis is being cheated badly in this equation. 2021, 588 million dollars was collected in the CBI program through sale of passports. We receive a mere 45 million dollars, seven percent, 147 million, nearly 150 million dollars is sitting down in Bastard that belong to Nevis. And you're telling me that these people on the other side cannot understand that? I mean, that really irks me to the point where I don't even know if I want to call in a happy name. Because I don't even think that there are any visions. But it really boils down to leadership. The lack of leadership. The lack of foresight. The lack of the ability that is to stand up when, it's, uh, when you're asked to stand up. But I want to give the assurance to the people of Nevis in 9, 10, and 11. The CCM is willing to stand up any day, any week, any month, any year for the island of Davis. We do that because we love this island. It's the most beautiful island in the Caribbean. As a matter of fact, when I travel and I stand up in any forum and I say that I am from Nevis, which is the closest thing to paradise and the nearest thing to heaven, they watch me want to know what Amanda say. saying. What I'm trying to say to them is one of the best islands on the earth. Because I've never been to heaven, but we are the nearest thing to heaven. And that is why I normally get a laugh too. Because they said they're going to thief my, my, um, my quote, my quotation. But ladies and gentlemen, listen, we were not intending to have a long meeting. I don't go on nearly 45 minutes as simple as it looks, you know. <laughs> but I think, I think I need to get the Honorable Mark Bradley on stage. But I want to say to the people of Nevis 11, once again, you would have been asked in 2020 to vote for Alexis Jeffers and the CCM. And I want to say to you that we are so happy and so pleased that you came out and you said it's time to change from 20 years of no representation to a new representative who is willing to stand up. And you know, since I've been the representative, I've made it certain and I've been clear about it that persons from Nevis 11 must find themselves on federal board. We have persons from St. James and St. Thomas's Parish who are on CFBC board, on the Public Service Commission Appeals Board, on the Social Security Board. These are persons from St. James and St. Thomas Parish. And I'll say to you, as openings become available, I'll always think about someone from Nevis 11 because you're the one who would have given me that mandate to go down and champion your, your cause. And I do that with all satisfaction and glee and everything that you want to talk about. I'll do it every time. So that being said, let us do, let us do a little roll call here. Because in Nevis 9, Nevis 9, the leader of the party, the Honorable Mark Brantley, who has been representing Nevis 9 
since 2007 is coming back to the people of Nevis 9 and he's asking them to give him another mandate to go back and fight and champion the cause of the people of Nevis 9. And I want the people of Nevis 9 to go on out and vote for the best, the best foreign affairs minister this country has ever seen <laughs> under his leadership. The first time in history, Nevisians have been made ambassadors. Nevisians have found themselves in councils all over the world. Nevisians can now aspire to be ambassadors as well. Nevisians can aspire to be in any country that has an alliance or any uh, relationship with the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Can aspire to go there. Whether it's in Taiwan, the Republic of China, Taiwan. Whether it's in Africa. Whether it's in, in, in Europe, anywhere in Europe. England, France, wherever we have embassies. And Nevisians can find themselves there any day. Because the Honorable Mark Brantley has made that possible. I say what you want about Mark Brantley. Every time he sit down, he think about Nevis. Scholarships, training opportunities. He think about Nevis every time he sits down anywhere in this world. And so the people of Nevis 9, you have done a wonderful job since 2007. I want you to continue to vote for him. In Nevis 10, Eric Evelyn have been there for two years. Man, he have gone to the farthest length of this world, to Glasgow. And Glasgow in a title, like Glasgow is in Scotland. So that's where he has gone. He has gone regionally and internationally. He has stood up on matters and championed matters pertaining to the environment all over the world. And we have seen a breath of fresh air being brought to that ministry in St. Kitts. I don't know if he'll have that ministry again when he goes there. He said he wants it back. Oh, you want it back? <laughs> it's a good thing you don't say you want it now because somebody over there said they want it now. You want it back. So I believe the people of Nevis 10 will go ahead and vote overwhelmingly for Eric Evelyn. He has said to me by 9 o'clock he wants to come to Nevis 11 to help me here. In Nevis 11. And so we come now to Nevis 10. Nevis 11, sorry. In Nevis 11, I have said this is the biggest constituency in the Federation. It stretches from all over in, well, the bottom of Zion, all the way to Craddock Road. My goodness, what a landmass. But I am proud to be the, the representative of the largest constituency in terms of landmass or land space. But it is what I love to do. Take on big challenges. And the people of St. James and St. Thomas says, I'm asking you to go out in your overwhelming numbers, starting down in Craddock Road, into Jessup, into Cotton Ground and Westbury, up to Newcastle, into Fountain, down to Camps, up to Brick Hill, into Butler's. One big sweep all the way through with an overwhelming victory come August 5th. They say it's freedom there. It is freedom there, of course. We'll say free at last. Free at last, thank God we're free at last. We have gotten rid of Timothy Harris and we have moved on to decent uh, government. Decent in government. Good governance once again. And I want to thank you in advance for your support here in Newcastle and St. James and Nevis 11. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I've run the whole gamut. I've had a good time tonight. <laughs> but I like to talk in St. James, you know. <laughs> I like to talk. But this is my country, you know, this belongs to me. And nobody gonna take no seat for me neither. <laughs> I'm gonna go and fight for what is really mine and what is rightfully mine. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, we are marrying cultural armor with in elections. And we still want to get into town to have some fun. So I'm gonna leave the stage shortly. But let me go out with some noise. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna go out in our overwhelming numbers in 9, 10, and 11 to vote for your CCM party. Are you ready for the elections to come? some noise as I leave the stage. Thank you for listening. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for your support. May God continue to bless this great constituency and the people of Nevis and the whole island on a whole. Thank you very much. That was your representative. Make some noise. Time soon come. Wanna thank the Honorable Alexis Jeffers for that.
Ladies and gentlemen, your concerned citizens movement, as we continue our meetings, our public meetings, we are going to be in the metropolis of Bath, Bath Village, on Wednesday. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock sharp, we are going to be in Bath. We still have on the map, don't worry about that. So Wednesday night in Bath Village, and then Friday night, we are going to be in Cotton Ground. Hold on, election soon come, man. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, while I was there, right, I get a little message and the message tell me that NRP candidates, they're going around and they're campaigning. They're going into people's house and they're talking to them. And when the people tell them, we're not interested in the NRP, they're telling the people, um, don't think about NRP. Think about me. You understand? They are going out to represent NRP. And they're telling the people, don't think about NRP. Think about me. We don't you see? want you in my business. No more NRP. You see, even the NRP candidates know that NRP is no good for the people of Nevis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving right along. And we have one more speaker for tonight. And of course, we know that person is the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement. And he has been doing a wonderful job leading the party. If you believe me, make some noise. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give him a raucous welcome here in your castle. Make some noise for me and help me welcome to the microphone none other than the leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the Honorable Mark Brantley. We vote for Mark now. We vote for Mark now. Brantley and his PC. to be a better country I want my people to have prosperity so I, I... Ladies and gentlemen, good evening Good evening to the good people of Castle and the good people of St. James You know I feel I always feel good when we campaign in St. James because St. James is CCM country So listen, Alexis spoke for some time, and I don't plan to be here for long. I have simply come to make the case that the Honorable Alexis Jeffers is the best representative for the people of Nevis 11. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming out of the first global pandemic that the world has seen in over a hundred years. And when we sat as a cabinet and we sought to find a way, bearing in mind that our hotel sector was shuttered, our airports were closed, we were concerned about food security in Nevis. We agonized over what would happen to us if the port of Miami were to close. And those containers that Rams and Value Mart and Best Buy bring in, if they couldn't come. And this cabinet said that we want to do more in terms of agriculture. We want the people of Nevis to produce more of what they eat and eat more of what they produce. And we have a saying in CCM, when you want something done, give it to Alexis. And we said to Alexis Jeffers that agriculture and food security has to be one of our primary responses to COVID-19. I invite you to go down to Indian Castle 
to see what he has done down there with 35 acres. Just today, I see him put up something that he's over at Potworks. He said he have melon and he have sweet corn coming. You could buy them. The reality is that Alexis Jeffers has revolutionized agriculture in Evis. And when he was elected by the good people of number 11, and he went over to St. Kitts, he revolutionized in less than two years agriculture in St. Kitts. Because agriculture in St. Kitts was struggling in less than two years. Notwithstanding the pandemic, because remember, he only got in in June of 2020. Pandemic was still on. And in less than two years, he reopened Bayford. That farm in Singhis that had been shuttered. He activated Foy's estate. And he brought hope to agriculture practitioners and farmers on the island of St. Kitts. To the point where I can tell you that some have said to me, we miss Alexis and we want him back in Boston. <laughs> I am saying to the people of number 11 that there is no need to gamble with those whom you don't know. There's no need to gamble with those who just have come. Because some of them were here in Nevis for over 20 long years. And the people of Castle never see them. The people of St. James never saw them. In fact, Alexis shared a joke with me. And Alexis said to me that at one point, when the leader of the NRP started to come around, he said to her, can you tell me who live in his three houses down from you, along the road where you have lived for the last 20 years? She don't have a clue. Because they never engage with anybody. They never talk to anybody. They never contributed anything. They were not involved in the community. They didn't do nothing for a church group, do something for a student, absolutely nothing. You all ever hear them sponsor anything? Castle, you all play football and all kind of sports over here in St. James. Have they ever sponsored anything? They were not interested in Nevis. All of a sudden, them kinny cat and become leader. And want to challenge a proud, humble, hard-working, honest representative like the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. And that is why I'm asking the people over here, number 11, to stick and stay with who you know. Because ever since he went up to Barbados and voluntarily surrendered his U.S. citizenship, I always commend him for that. A lot of people are desperate to get into the United States. Alexis was desperate to get back to Nevis. And he went up and he said to the ambassador, Ambassador, thank you very much, but take back your passport. Because my lot is with my people in St. James, my people in St. Thomas's, my people in Nevis. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what you call patriotism. That is what you call love of country. Because not many people would have done what he did. And he did it because he wanted to demonstrate that his love, his commitment was right here where his neighbor Stringberry. And I celebrate that and that is why I have said in this campaign that when I go to Basti, I don't want to be looking over my shoulder. I want to look left, right, right, left, and see Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn with me. Shoulder to shoulder.
shoulder. And I believe the people of Nevis have seen us. A proud legacy of representation. When we were in opposition, we stood up and we said that the people of Nevis deserved their fair share. In fact, so much was that a part of the CCM that we documented it in something called the Charleston Accord. And three people, the Honorable Van Sam, we have blessed memory. The Honorable Sean Richards and Timothy Harris all signed that document on the courthouse steps in Charleston. But once the document was signed, and once we got into government in 2015, then we started to see the attitude change. And you know, I saw somebody send me a quote the other day. I don't know if I'll get it precise. But you know, it said something like this. Be careful who you let on the ship. Because some would prefer to sink the ship if they can't be the captain. And I thought that was instructive. That some prefer to sink the ship if they cannot be the captain. That reminds me of when we were boys. And if you're on the bat and you get out first ball, you take up your bat and you go home. The game done. And that is what is happening in our country. One man, one man decide that he will dishonor. The agreements that we have made. One man decide that Nevis and Nevisions should be satisfied with crumbs. And because we said no, that we cannot agree to that, the whole government mash up. Because if you cannot be the captain, you prefer to sink the ship. Well, I am here to say that August 5th, is Freedom Day. And on August 5th, I am encouraging the people of number 11 to go out in your numbers and vote for the Honorable Alexis Jefferson. I am encouraging the people of number 10 to go out in their numbers and vote for the Honorable Eric Evelyn. And number nine, oh, number nine. I'm encouraging the people of number nine who have been with me since 2007 and have always been with me to go out and vote overwhelmingly for the Mark Brantley. On election day, he's on a hammer It's only one choice, we vote in CCM. Only one choice, we vote in CCM. This platform is a platform of standing up for Nevis. And we are not apologizing for standing up for Nevis when I hear petitions calling me and saying that it is the first team they have seen in Sinkits that has stood up the way that we are standing up. You see me? Some of them are not going to like me, you know. And that's okay. If everybody like you, something wrong with you. Some of them are not going to like me. Because I check my passport every morning just to make sure what it says. And every time I check it, it says Mark Anthony Graham Brantley. It never said Kunumunu, no way on it. And if my mother never called me Kunumunu, me shouldn't act like me a Kunumunu. You elected me to lead a party and to lead an island and to lead a people. And I cannot lead unless I have my team with me. We vote the Pama now. We vote the Pama now. And my team is the Honorable Alexis Jeffers in 11. And the Honorable Eric Evelyn in 10. Now imagine my surprise. When some weeks ago, somebody in sync is got a little frightening easy over there. Call me and say, boy, we have a concern. We have a... I say, what's the concern? Oh, number 11 is in trouble and number 9 is in trouble. I said, number 11 and number 9, where? Where? They have a different 11 and 9 that we don't know about? Because I don't understand because I don't tell them August 5th is a Friday. 
Eric gonna done do what he do up there by 9.30, 10 o'clock latest. And when Eric is done, we have asked Eric to send the legions from Gingerland. Let them spread out all over Nevis. And come here and come by me and help us. Because I have said to them in St. Kitts that the counting in this election doesn't start at one. It starts at nine. Nine, ten, eleven, and once, once we have those sweet seats, once we have those sweet seats, the saints are going to go marching into Church Street again. Look how easy we go hammer them. Because everything we do about them. Look how easy we go hammer them. Everything we do is about them. They said the soak artists them frighten because they said it's a road march. Big tune because that's how CCM does things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the landscape of Nevis. And we see the transformation that has happened on this island. I continue to be shocked and dismayed that some people are running around pretending to be blind. But I say that every time I get a chance, I will say, it. you must Google the story of Rip Van Winkle. Because he slept for 20 years up in the mountains. And when he come back down, he asks people who are keep. He don't know because he was fast asleep. So when you hear the leader of NRP say, nothing I keep, don't be upset with the lady. The lady was fast asleep for 20 years. And as a consequence, she has no sense of what has been happening on this island of Nevis. I was so happy recently to talk to some people who had just come home. Just come home, just come back from overseas. And they indicated that the level of development they had seen, a lot of which happened during COVID, they can't believe that this is Little Nevis. When I get the statistics from the Malcolm Gishard Recreational Park and realize that three and four thousand people are using it, sometimes in the space of a month and a month and a half, I said, look at that. They can't even book it enough because once they have something other people are asking for the park people from sinkets want to come over to have events in that park you know that park was done during covid done by the ccm a lasting legacy put there in memory in memory of the great malcolm gishard that is what we do we have meaningful development in Nevis. When we turn to Alexis, we said the Joyston Library Primary School does not have a kitchen. Go and build one. And Alexis delivered. We said, Alexis, we have an industry in this country, the water taxi business, 100% Nevision owned. They need a peer. Go and build one. Alexis went and did it. When we said Alexis, the firemen and the police officers over here at Newcastle are living in desperate conditions at the old police station. We said something has to be done and I will tell you all here tonight that there was some from Nevis who went down to St. Kitts and say, we don't need no police station in Castle. They went down there and they say, Give the police in Cotton Ground a car and give the police up in Ginger and a car and let them patrol. And Alexis said, so you mean to tell me if something happens at MUA? Something happened at Nisbet Plantation? Something happens at Wally? Something happens at the water taxi pier? Something happens at the airport? Because all of those are over here. That you mean to tell me we have to call police to come from Gingerland or Cotton Ground? And he stood up, and I will always respect the man, Alexis Jeffers. Because were it not for he, we would not have the magnificent police station in Castle. 
And then some fool, fool person said, Am I happy? Me don't know what they be. Don't call me, tell me that your castle spell wrong. Me say, If that's all you could criticize, then that's okay. That's okay. You're right, it's a new castle. A beautiful edifice put there because of the commitment of Alexis Jeffers. Recall, you know, national security is not NIA responsibility. National security is a federal responsibility. But the police officers were left over here to live in bat mess and rat mess, to have termites. And it is this government that said our police deserve better. And we went to First Caribbean and we borrowed, if I recall, $3.5 million. And when the thing nearly finished, Timothy came with a million dollars and then started to say he wanted to make sure the money is not being squandered. Well, if you come with one million out of a project cost over five, you're out of order. But you say, you see, night run till morning, catch him. Because he had all kind of things to say most recently, with his forwardness going to say that we only want sinkers for the money. And I'm asking the question, I continue to ask the question, where sinkers get money from? Where sinkers get money from? Mark can run this country. For Mark has no love for sinkers. The only thing he loves in sinkers is our money. Le listen, DJ, see if you can find it again. Mark I can run this country. For Mark has no love for sinkers. The only thing he loves in sinkers is our money. I want to know. I want to know where singers get money from. In fact, the clip, the clip DJ was a little longer than that. But if that's what you have, fine. But he went on to say that they, he started out on Mark, and then he went on to say they, that what we want, the people of Nevis, is sink its money. Now, when we look at our passport that the money is coming from, it says St. Christopher and Nevis. And I have gone throughout the world and through my job as foreign minister, I have made that passport the number one in our region. It's all the one. Play the whole clip, DJ. The people want to hear it because some said they don't believe it, Timo. It's all the one to use us. The man is saying to Nivision's mind, he say, Father from Katwong. And I am asking on behalf of the people of Nevis that the DNA test so in Nevis will say the autopsy. That it has to be done because he got to be a wrong child. No person with Nivision blood could behave that way towards the people of Nevis. And then to see some in Nevis taking his money and jumping up, want to join with him. Well, if I was with him and I come out and I tell Nevis people what was happening. And then he come and he talk for himself and you hear him say how he feel about Nevis. Where are you going with him? Where are you going with him? Leave him because on August 5th he knows. He knows that he's done. There is no more Timothy after August 5th. And so we must get ready for what is going to happen thereafter. A new dawn in our country. Let me tell you, when it came time to get things done, we asked Alexis, Alexis, could you get in gear? I remember, I remember NRP used to cuss Alexis calling bulldozer. I remember that. And I said to Alexis one day, Alexis, 
Boy, they might call you bulldozer. You know what Zook say, glad? Because they use bulldozer to build. You use bulldozer to clear area and get things done. So I'm glad. And after I suspect that they saw that what they saw was an attack, was a compliment, they stopped calling him that. The reality is that in this Nevis, we need people who are serious. I keep saying over and over that we live in a very serious time. And that serious times demand serious attention from serious people. We have some Johnny come ladies who are going around saying to the people of Nevis, vote for me in a federal election. They forget that for nine, four years, they cost CCM. Say we bad, we worthless, we greedy. They use all kind of big words that me not understand. To say to us that it was wrong, morally reprehensible for us to run local and run federal. But now they're doing the same. They're doing the same. But now that they're doing the same, they used to curse us and say for nine, four years, that how we are collecting pain sinkets and we are collecting pain nevis and it is wrong. And now they say not only are they running in boat, but if they go sink it, they don't want no portfolio, but they want the pay. And so you have to ask the question, people of Newcastle and people of Nevis, why are you running and asking the people of Nevis to send you to St. Kitts if you're not prepared to get a portfolio and to do the work? <laughs> so you want money. You want money, but no work. That appears to be the position of these people who have just come, who have just arrived, and who have absolutely no sense of what is happening on the island of Nevis. When I watch them, and they start to launch attacks, now things was going smooth, you know. We going around and we blew them, going around with the green, nobody had trouble, nobody. They start up this set of attacks now on us, talking about we corrupt with this, with that, we say, oh yeah. So we start to make one, two little phone calls. And we say, listen, 20 years ago, a woman washed ashore in Nevis. We want to know why did she wash ashore in Nevis. She had a big meeting at her launch. She said to the people of Nevis that I headed a department in the United States, Virgin Islands. She said I was at the height of my career. Those are her words, not mine. She said a very lucrative career. That means she was making a lot of money. And she left all of that and came back to Nevis. And I said, what a noble thing to do. That you leave a lucrative career at the height and you come back to Nevis. Oh my God, this must be Mary Magdalene. And only to hear that while she in Nevis, Big investigation going on down there in Virgin Islands. <laughs> While she in Nevis, people in her team were convicted and went to jail. <laughs> and when she made the point, she said, oh, it was white collar crime. Well, Lord, uh, that's so good. That's so like when you go for breakfast, you say, I'll have the white collar toast. It sound good. All it mean, castle people, I understand English. A thief in. And over here I will say, a thief, them thief. One get nine years, somebody named Plasket. Another one, me can't remember that one the name, get seven years. Real jail that they get down there. And she was head of the department. But said nobody must ask any questions. Nobody must ask any questions. And because a poor woman from Jessup put on Facebook, we the people of Nevis deserve to know. The woman got a five-page lawyer letter and said they want $45,000 from a poor woman in Jessup because the people of Nevis must not ask. Today the bailiff called me 
And when the bailiff called me, me answered my phone right away. I said, do you have a letter for me? He said, I don't have any letter for you. I said, oh, a monkey know him to jump on. I am the man talking about it. So how come you send a letter to a poor woman in Jessup? If you want 45,000, come to me. Let me and you tangle. Because I have a report, 20 page long report called Contracts and Cronies that was done by investigative journalists in the US Virgin Islands. <laughs> and they looked at the coastal zone management unit that she headed. And when they looked at that, they said, but wait, there was a phantom, fictitious, fake, zombie company named Elite. Elite. And Elite was awarded a contract. She sat on the panel of four that evaluated the bids. There were three bids. The journalists said that the other two were eminently more qualified than Elite, but Elite get the contract. Elite vice president was a taxi driver and a fireman. The journalists themselves, when they catch him in a place, them Tutu, now ask me what Tutu be, or uh, where Tutu there. But they said Tutu. Tutu. And when they catch the man in a place in Tutu, the man jumped down off the wall, as we will say over here, out of port. Jump in the car and he gone. All the employees and key personnel that Elite said they had turned out to be fake. Elite had no address in the Virgin Islands, no business license in the Virgin Islands. And the leader of NRP sat on a committee that gave Elite the contract. And when Elite got the contract, her own staff members said that Elite was not honoring the contract. Elite got to be that the other name is Timothy. Not honoring the agreement. Them say Elite should report every month. Seven long months, Elite did not file any report. And when the staff wrote in the words of the journalists, a scathing report on Elite, the lead of NRP still overrode her own staff and authorized an additional 162,000 US dollars to this company. And we must not ask any questions. I tell them, politics is not Sunday school. When you come into politics, people are going to go back to your past, Lord of mercy. They go to your mother, father, grandmother, your guru, 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 great godmother. They go to your godparents, they go to your cousins, your associates. And people are going to say, because it's important, who are you? So you ask yourself the question, you are the head of an organization. You are the height of your career, a lucrative career. And you wash ashore in Nevis and you're not going back. You stay up here and when the heat's so hot down there, people, you're not going to jail for the same elite scam. And then you resign. And you start to jump up and say, nobody must ask you nothing. And then to add salt in the soil to dig stick in it she get a man named the young the young comes say he endorsing and i hear the young boy talks so good he said i have known janice and janice is a good person and me say boy where you get the young to endorse that's a big endorsement so me go on google and me say who named this the young the first thing pop up governor the young arrested two counts of embezzlement Lord Castle, that's another big word. Teething again. Teething again. The young and the young had to pay back 380,000 US dollars to the government of the Virgin Islands. And only when he paid that back were the charges dropped. And I am asking, was this the best that Janice could find to bring in front of his people? You see, when I entered politics, I was endorsed by a real hero. So Simeon Daniel, she bring the young, she bring the young, but when you match up so Simeon, and you match he to the young, no comparison, one is a national hero, no comparison, I believe if you are to be endorsed by somebody, it should be somebody of substance, <laughs> and the thing that bothers me, 
is that when we are asking the questions of the NRP and of the NRP leader, what happened in the Virgin Islands? All of them on Facebook are say, listen to the young. Listen to the endorsement from the young. Well, since Google said the young was arrested and charged on two counts of embezzlement, and the young had to pay back 380,000 US Lord of mercy, they don't mention the young now at all. They regret the day that they ever came to the people of Nevis with the young. And that is why we know that they're not serious. That is why we continue to say to the people of Nevis that these people who just come, who you don't know, you don't know what they stand for. Matter of fact, it appears to me that they stand for nothing. They are not prepared to stand up for Nevis. They're not prepared to stand up on a platform like we are and say that we are going to Bass here to fight for Nevis. Instead of that, every time they stand up, oh, this needs to be done. I see them got up a video with some goat running across the drag strip. Where the goat must run? If the goat want to get from one side to the next, what they want them to swim out in the ocean and come around? Why are you going to put a video of some goat running? Well, what that said, the jack ship spoil? Well, I never see goat here upon Shaw's Road. That mean I can't drive on the road? Me got tongue the other day, me see two goats in tongue. So what that mean? And the goat them in tongue was wearing green too, you know? So what you mean to tell me that tongue is no good because two goats dressed in green walking in tongue? This, this is the stupidity. The asinine behavior of people who say that they're interested in running this country. Tell them wicked people, fire go bond day, fire Ladies and gentlemen, Timothy Carl, election in middle of culture armor. And me know a lot of you want to go to the various shows. But let me tell you all something. That we intend to go to Bastia on August. Fifth, we are going to win the election on August 5th. The people of Nevis are going to send the three of us from the CCM back to finish the work that we started. And I am saying that we have already served notice that when we are coming, we want what belongs to Nevis. I want it to be clear to our brothers and sisters in St. Kitts, we have no fight with the people of St. Kitts. We are fighting for what lawfully and rightfully and correctly belongs to the people of Nevis. You cannot be going across the globe selling our passport. And when the money comes, you take 93% and give us seven. And then got the heart to say, what am I make noise for? They never used to get nothing. Tell them take that and be satisfied. Them too greedy. Them too greedy. What am I make noise for? That is how we are being considered. That is how we are being thought of. And we have said, no, no, we will not stand for that. And when we go back to St. Kitts, when we go back, Lord, I don't even know when the swearing is going to be. Because Monday going to have to be a holiday. Monday going to have to be a holiday. Matter of fact, the freedom going to be so sweet. We might got two days. Because since they might interfere with our juve and our carnival and our culture, I'm sorry, we might have to have two more days of juve. The point that I'm seeking to make, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is that the people of Nevis understand quite clearly who stands with them who stands for them and i know that the people of number 11 are going to make the right choice on election day and we are not just talking what have we said we have said that there's too much unfairness in this country towards the people of nevis you know they have a peace program we voted for the peace program. The peace program was designed to give young people 
who were on a path that was a destructive path, a new path, where they could get do something constructive with their lives. And we have seen a dramatic reduction in violent crime. Praise be to God. But the peace program, even in that, they are unfair to the people of Nevis. The last time I checked, which was about a month ago, there were 1,225 people on the peace program. They tell Nevis, no women are allowed on the program. But in sync is granny and all. Granny and all on the program in sync it's. They said, they said to the people here in Nevis that if you were also getting assistance through pop or through step, you couldn't get both. They say you had to take one or the other, make your choice. And every youngster in Nevis was on that program. Had to choose. Some chose step, some chose to stay on the peace. But only in Nevis. In St. Kitts, the youngsters get in pep. They get in step. They get in peace. They get in pop. And some say they get in Timothy too. <laughs> they get in. They get in all of that. 1,225 of them in St. Kitts. You know how many in Nevis? 71. 71. And then they tell us the program in Nevis is closed. Let us look at STEP. STEP was designed. Beautiful program. You know what STEP was designed to do? If a youngster wants to become a mason or a carpenter, a mason, a contractor, that doesn't want to hire that youngster because he said, I'm going to have to pay him and still train him. So the government says to step, we will pay him. You train him. And then after he's good enough, a year or two, then you hire him. A beautiful program. So in step now, Timothy come to the cabinet in sink. He said he can't put no more people on step. Step closed off. Well, we figure... He's the minister of finance. That is what he said. Only then to realize that what he was doing to undermine his colleagues. People go to their constituency rep, as you know. So down in sink, it's a young man will go to Sean Richards and say to Sean, he needs a little something to do. Sean say, we can't put you on the step because the prime minister say that the step closed. The same young man go back and say, Lord, things are bad with me. I'm so sorry. We can't put you there because he said, the thing is closed. And then could you believe it? That the same young man go to Timothy and Timothy put him on the program. The young man then come back and tell Sean, well, Sean, you, you know, you not do nothing for me. Because I come and I ask you and you say, it can't happen. And look, we go one conversation and the man put me on. That is how he was undermining his colleagues. A young man called me up to today, said that he's doing some farming and he needs a step or two worker to help him. And we understand that if you're starting a small business, you don't have the capital to be paying out lots of money in terms of staffing. We understand that that is what Step was designed to do. And imagine as a premier of Nevis, I have to tell this young man, I have no authority, nothing to do with the STEP program. That is why we have said to the people of Nevis that after the 5th of August, after Freedom Day, Nevis must have its own peace program, its own STEP program, its own pop program, its own social programs. And we have somebody in Nevis who has demonstrated the capacity, the love of people who can handle those programs, and that person is the Honorable Eric Evelyn. I don't tell Eric, Eric, get ready, because all of these programs will be put in your hand, because nobody could manage a program for divisions better than divisions. And we must be responsive to the call of the people of Nevis. When they need something done, we must be able to do it. And that's a commitment that we are making that we must have 
whatever social programs to assist people administered right here in Nevis by Nevisions for Nevisions. We have said that we want to open up the south coast of Nevis. If you were to travel to Long Point by the port, or better still, if you do like me sometimes and you go up by Sandy, up the hill in Brownie to get a piece of chicken, drive up on the hill and look across, you see thousands of acres of land. Not a thing down there but some sheep and goat. And we have said that we want to open up those lands for development. Just so in sync is they opened up the Southeast Peninsula for development, we just transformed that area in sinkets that was hitherto inaccessible. We are going to open up that south coast by doing a highway from Long Point all the way to Gingerland. And that will open up that area of Nevis for much needed development. Nevis is growing, Nevis is developing, and you need a government with vision to ensure that the island continues to progress. <laughs> This Newcastle Airport, Van Samri International, it has fallen into difficulty because time and time again we've got the small planes to come and people say no, that is not their preference. We already have, we already have a plan. And that plan, ladies and gentlemen, we hired a firm called Paris Consulting. Again, when you want something done, who you sent to do it? Alexis. And Alexis of Boston, Alexis of Boston tell me how he had two hours of flying school. So he know about plane and he know about flying. One time we go Antigua and coming back, he jump up there, sit down next to the pilot. I said, what you do up there? He said, I went to flying school for two hours. If anything happened, I could handle things. <laughs> so I said, well, since you said you went to flying school and you know about plane, Handle the project for us. And we found Paris Consulting. They did Argyle International Airport in St. Vincent. And they've already produced a design for us. You know what we want to do with that? We want to transform this into a private jet facility that can accommodate the regional traffic. You know why? Because sometimes Four Seasons and them are telling us they have a charter. They want to bring a charter from Miami. And we are saying that when that happens, it should be able to land right here at the Van Samri Airport. <laughs> you all see what Anguilla has done? What Dominica has done? The same thing is going to happen right here in Nevis. And so we have a plan to take the airport runway a farther distance down. And that will allow us to have the traffic that we want. We have a plan to expand the parking facility, and to build a hangar, and to provide fuel here, right here at the Van Sam International Airport. <laughs> Big ideas. All of us are suffering from the fuel surcharge. As electricity prices rise, they're rising because of the increased cost of fuel, oil, is going up. In fact, Nevlek has advised the government that the cost of diesel has gone up over 100% since last year. And so they're passing on that cost to people and people are crying out. When we talk about unfairness, your brothers and sisters in Sinkis do not pay fuel surcharge. They don't pay fuel surcharge in Sinkis. You know why? They don't pay fuel surcharge because the same passport money is being used to subsidize electricity in Sinkits. But they're telling the people of Nevis that we must not get our fair share. And I am saying that this government, despite the limitations, we've already responded. And the cabinet has taken a decision to provide an additional $1.75 million a month to Nevlek so that Nevlek can cap the fuel surcharge and ensure that it goes no higher. Of course, we are praying that the world oil prices will settle down. But in the interim, 
we have to work towards renewable energy. And that is why we have said that the geothermal project was stalled because there was no money to do it. Matter of fact, in the same Charleston Accord, it says that one of the commitments from the citizenship by investment money was, in fact, the geothermal project. Yet another failed promise of those in St. Kitts. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we are saying that we have plans for our money. We have promised the young people in Nevis that we are going to create a college of further education here and remove the sixth form from the grounds of the Charleston Secondary School. When I went sixth form all those years ago, I felt I was a big man when I put on a different color uniform. And imagine big man like me, there's sixth form. You still got to go down assembly, go sing how great thou art. And if you're not careful, huh? we had a principal there named Christine Springit. One morning I said, we're a big man, we now go assembly. She make us cut grass all around the hall while the rest of them in the hall are sing. Well, you know how bad that make us feel? A girl said to me, you remember when you were my prefect? I said, yes. She said, oh, you also remember when you had to cut the grass because you play big man? So we said, we said, we are going to move that and create a purpose-built center for further education for the young people in Nevis. We've already embarked on training centers, built the TVET center up in Gingerland. And we are going to build a second one in Charleston. What is TVET going to do? Teach people skills. Get people certified. A lot of young men and women right here in Castle, you could bake good cakes. You could, you could be the best mason, the best carpenter. But guess what? You don't have a piece of paper. The best plumber, but you don't have a piece of paper. The best electrician, but you don't have a piece of paper. So we are saying that TVET is designed to give you that certification so that you get your piece of paper. So when you go overseas or you go anywhere and you say, I'm a plumber, the first question they're going to ask you, where's your certificate? That is where we are moving to. And that is what is allowing us to boldly proclaim that this CCM party is the best party for the island of Nevis. I go back to Alexis Jeffers again. He has revolutionized housing in this island. When you look at the developments for the first time in the history of Nevis, Alexis Jeffers under his watch as the Minister of Housing, we have housing development in Ghana's, Madden's, Rice's, Cherry Garden, Craddock Road, Hamilton, and I hear some somewhere in Nisbet settlement as well. Zuka Bill House all over Nevis. Just today we walked into the development in Craddock Road and what a beautiful development and you know finish it. And he has already said to me, I want $25 million because I have more housing to do. Housing revolution under Alexis Jeffers. Do you know? And the people of St. James should know that Alexis Jeffers found some 30 plus acres of land up in Ghana's and came to the cabinet and made the case that the government should buy that land for the benefit of the people of St. James and the people of Nevis. <laughs> Do you know that the lands at Herbert's Beach were being sold to Anbas and Alexis Jeffers intervened and said, no, we must acquire those lands to ensure that the people of Nevis Always have access to Herbert Street. We must give Jack his jacket. And we must give credit where credit is due. And that is why I'm here standing proud with Alexis. Because I have sat with the man. We sat in opposition when the fight was hard. Shoulder to shoulder. And we entered government together. And we will continue to fight the good fight for the people of Nevis. Ladies and gentlemen, I have perhaps overstayed my welcome. But I wanted to make some things pellucid. We are the best team on offer in this election. Pound for pound, we are the best team that has been assembled on the island of Nevis for this election.
And that is why the DJ just played that piece of the road march tune for CCM. Because come August 5th, Freedom Day, we're gonna hammer them! Look how easy we go hammer them! Everything we do, it's a bad day. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do me a small, small little favor. On the 5th of August, I want you to go out early. I want you to make sure that your neighbor goes out early. I want you to pick up your friends on the way. I want you to call the phone and say, Punsi, you vote yet? And if Punsi say no, say Punsi are coming for you right now. I realize Punsi is my favorite name. I want you to go out in your numbers and let everybody across this island, across this federation, across this Caribbean, across this world, feel the power of the concerned citizens movement. Let me tell you, the result in nine, I want that early out and ensure that number nine is blue all the way. And I have made bold to say that if it's one vote I am sure of in number nine is my good, good, good CCM cousin Pat Bartlett. Because when you're accustomed to doing something all your life, you can't just change. So I believe when she goes in there, she will say, well, since I done say I want the portfolio in Sinkis, I mean, I really want the work. Let me vote for my cousin. And let me cousin go along, because he's competent, he's capable. He's sober, he's sensible. He has all that it takes to go to Sinkis and represent the people of Nevis, including me. So let me vote for Mark, and let Mark go along, they go do the work. Nobody going to know but she and Jesus. In number 10, there is no contest. Eric Evelyn all the way. Because as I said in Rollins when we were there, it is, it is a disgrace that the NRP has sent somebody who is not from Gingerland to say he's going to represent the people of Gingerland. But what do you mean? The whole of St. George, I can't find one person who's willing to put up their hand and say, send me. So they send a sacrificial lamb. And so, I well want him lose the deposit up there in Gingerland. In number 11, right here in St. James, Newcastle people, you have always been good to the concerned citizens movement. I want you in Brick Hill, in Butlers, in Camps, in Newcastle. Then I want you to go down there in Westbury. I want you in Cotton Ground. I want you in Barn Scott. I want you in Jessops and in Craddock Road. CCM, CCM, Alexis, Alexis. I want you to go out in your numbers and vote for the Concerned Citizens Movement. So as I leave the stage tonight, CCM people, let me hear you. CCM people, are you ready? CCM people, make some noise. Welcome to this. CCM, are you ready? Thank you. Good night and God bless you. I'm jamming with the big blue machine. I'm rolling with the big blue machine.